So Keith Avalon has a wrestling game now. And he says that it's got heat. And he says that it's got faces and heels. It's got superstars, interviews, cheap shots, pushes. Everything you need to create your own wrestling federation inside a nice little box. Let me tell you, Keith Avalon, AFR Steve is going to open up that box. And then I'm going to show everybody exactly what you bring to the table. And when it's all said and done, and I pin you for one, two, three, everyone's going to say, that's game. Hey everybody, Steve here, and today we're taking a look at Face to the Mat, the pro wrestling game from Keith Avalon over at Play.com. This game was released in 2009. It's for one or two players, and an individual match is probably going to take you between 5 and 10 minutes to play out, and a full event will take you anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how many matches you have in your event. Now, in Face to the Mat, it's an interesting game in that you'll decide which matches are going to take place during each event and who's going to wrestle in those matches, but the game engine itself is actually going to tell you what happens during that match. So you get to experience the game from both the perspective of a general manager of a wrestling federation and that you set up the matches, but then you kind of get to sit back and experience it as a fan watching those matches unfold. Now, how the game engine works is each of the wrestlers is rated on a certain number of qualities, such as being agile or strong or heavy or being a favorite or perhaps a mean cheat. And the match will be run by a deck of cards, these fast action cards, and you're going to flip one over and that's going to ask which wrestler has those traits and whichever one does, they're going to score points. And you'll move the marker down on the score track until one of the wrestlers is able to attempt a pinfall or he gets all the way to the bottom of the track and is able to hit his finisher to end the match in a dramatic fashion. Now along the way you might have some run-ins from one of the wrestler's allies. Maybe a wrestler that's holding a grudge will inter interject himself into the match. And basically anything that you've come to expect from the uh, modern professional wrestling can happen in face to the mat. So how does all of this come together? Well, let's... Open up a box, we'll take a look at what's inside, we'll take a closer look at one of the sample wrestlers, and then I'll show you a couple minutes of a match so you can see how the game works. And then I'll come back and tell you what I think after further review. So inside the box, the, there are two game boards. They'll be the actual main board where you'll put the two wrestlers who are having a match and then there is the scoring track on each side and there are two chips so you can keep track of where each individual wrestler is and then the other game board is called the hot box and what this is for each of the wrestlers in the match you're gonna put a card down for an ally a foe and then the two wrestlers that have the highest grudge grade. What's the grudge grade? Well, let's take a closer look at one of the player cards. We'll show you all the qualities and what the TV grades and grudge grades are all about. So this is Staff Sergeant Mickey Bristol, better known as Sergeant Slash. And he is one of the wrestlers from the fictional set that's available for this game. And here are all the qualities that this particular wrestler has. And the star beside them 
tells you that he can use those qualities at any point during the match. I'll take a look at Vegas Vance Yancey and you'll see that he has a couple of qualities that have one has a square beside it and one has a circle and what these refer to is where that wrestler is on the scoring track so when someone has a star beside it that means at any point during the match they are able to make use of that quality however if it has a square then they can only use it when the scoring track is at one of the square spaces. And then the same thing, if it has a circle beside it, they can only make use of that trait when their scoring track marker is on a circle. The call for which trait is being used will come from the fast action cards. So for instance, this card here is asking for the quick quality. And so what would happen if you flip this card over, you would look at each of the wrestlers and see which one has the quick quality. So here, Sergeant Slash does not have it, but Paul Gregory Allison, better known as the PGA Tour, does have the quick quality. And so he would score two points and clobbers up his opponent with a double knee lift. And then you just simply move his scoring marker down two points. And that is really how a match is going to play out. Once you resolve a card, then you would just simply flip to the next card and check to see which wrestler has that trait and if if neither of them do you would simply move on if both of them do then there's a tiebreaker procedure that you'll go through and the match is going to continue until you get the marker moved down to one of these three positions here that say pin with a question mark and if that happens say that this last one here, the mean quality, and Sergeant Slash does have that. And so he moves up one spot to the pin. And then what you're going to do is you're going to check to see if he is able to score a pinfall. And here's where you're going to refer to the TV grade. And you'll see that it's written in, and that's because these cards come empty. When you first set up your wrestling organization, you're going to determine where each wrestler starts on the TV grade chart and it goes through it in the in the booklet the best way to do that uh, and then as you run through events players TV grades will go up and down depending on how they do but in this case the PGA Tour he has a C and so we'll see right here on the game board it says 11 to 23 so he'll have three chances to kick out so you just roll the dice and he kicked out on the first count there so he gets out of the pinfall, and then the match would continue. Now, if at any point a wrestler is able to move to the finisher column, then you're going to look at the bottom of his card, and it'll tell you if he has a finisher. In this case, Sergeant Slash has the government issue power bomb, and then it's going to have a dice range. And what that means is you'll roll the two dice and see if it falls within the range of that. And if it does, that means he hits his finisher and then scores the either the pinfall or the submission and if it falls outside of it that means that he misses his finisher and then you would move his scoring marker down back down to the corner square and then the match would continue from there now the last thing on the player cards is this grudge grade and the grudge grade like the TV grades starts empty and when you set up your federation you can decide which wrestlers start with a grudge grade and then they'll gain them and lose them as you run through events. What the grudge grade basically means is a wrestler that feels he's been slighted, perhaps he was cheated out of a title, and these wrestlers are going to try to work their way into other people's matches until they're satisfied that they've got their recognition or their justice for any wrongdoing that's happened to them. And that's why Every match that happens, there are two spots up here for wrestlers with the high grudge grade. And they may or may not come into the match that's going on. You'll see that each of the boxes up here in the hot box has a number beside them. There are certain events that are going to come up in the results book that will ask for a die roll. And if it does, you'll just roll the, the die 
and then refer to that wrestler. And then at some point it'll say that the ally of the underdog, the ally of the favored wrestler, and then you just simply refer to that particular one. Let's take just a quick look at the Highlight Center booklet. And this is where you're going to go through and get all the different results. There are a lot of highlight reel tables. And then towards the end of the book, it'll show you how to actually go through a match, set up your federation. And then it even tells you how to play head-to-head. -head. And then if you want to create a wrestler, it even has a page for that. And then uh, just finally in the rulebook, there is even different types of matches that you are able to run with this game. You can do cage matches, object matches, tag teams, or three for alls. And then finally you can even do a battle royale match. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. So basically anything that you've seen on a modern wrestling show on TV, there's a way that you can do it with face to the mat. So how does everything come together? Well, let's set up a match here in my after further review wrestling federation between the defending lightweight champion Sergeant Slash and he'll be defending his title against the PGA Tour. So when you set up a match you need to decide first what kind of match it's going to be. In this case we're just going to have a normal match and then you're going to decide who the favored wrestler is. So since Sergeant Slash is the defending champion we'll have him as the favored wrestler and that means that the PGA Tour is going to be the underdog and we'll set him up over here. And then you will also decide which wrestler is going to be the face or the good guy wrestler. In this case, it's obvious that Sergeant Slash will be the face wrestler and the PGA Tour will be the heel. And then you'll pick out their allies. Well, for Sergeant Slash, he has Officer Carl Barnes as his ally. The golden oldie Elvis Holly is his foe. And then for... The PGA Tour, the cyber geek Gary Needmeyer, will be his ally. Fast Bobby, Bobby Bernard, is his foe. And then the two highest grudge grade wrestlers right now are Sam Banner and the Pit Boss, Vegas Vance Yancey. Okay, so now that we have the wrestlers out and set up on the board, first thing we're going to do is this wrestling storyline pre-match. We'll just simply roll one die. Well, in this case we rolled a two and that tells us we're going to go to highlight reel O. So here's highlight reel O. We'll roll the two D6. The black die will be the first number. And we roll the 64. And at 64 it says that the commissioner makes derogatory comments about wrestlers on TV. Increase both wrestlers grudge grades by three points. So there we go, some action right at the start here. So we just simply fill in that, and now they both have three grudge points. There we go, so the show's off to a, a rock and rolling start with a, the evil commissioner coming out and berating both of his wrestlers. And now we're going to start the match. So we got our deck of cards up here, and we're just going to flip it over, and we'll read the right hand side and which one's facing up. So this is asking for the heavy trait. And we look over and both of these are lightweight wrestlers so neither of them have the heavy quality. And when I ask for a quality check and neither of them has it, that means nothing happens and you just move on to the next one. So flip that over and now it's a TV move. When those come up, you're going to just check who has the highest TV grade, which in this case Sergeant Slash has an A and the PGA Tour has a C. So Sergeant Slash, is, he locks on a headlock for three points and we'd move his scoring track down to three and he jumps out to the, the early lead go to the next one this is asking for the helped quality and in this case neither wrestler has a valet or a manager so again we move on to the next card and now it's asking for the specialty quality now, you'll see that both wrestlers do have a specialty, and so when a quality check comes up, and then they're both tied, 
you're going to go to the tie breaking procedure. The tie breaking procedure is fairly simple. If both players, if both wrestlers have the the, the skill on the fast action card, or if they have the same TV or grudge grade, when a, when those cards come up, you just are going to award the points to whichever wrestler is trailing in the match. And if they're both at the same spot on the scoring track, then you would give the points to the favored wrestler. So, Sergeant Slash jumped out to that early lead, so that means that the PGA Tour is going to hit his specialty. And you see his specialty is he terrorizes his opponent with an assortment of golf clubs. So he's going to take the action to the outside, grab one of his golf clubs, give Sergeant Slash a couple whacks, and score two points on the scoring track and get himself back into this match. So both wrestlers then climb back into the ring, and then we would simply continue until one of them gets down to either the pinfall or is able to hit their finisher and end the match there. All right, guys, so there's a look at Face to the Mat, the pro wrestling game. So as you can see, this is really a game where you're going to get out of it what you put into it. And what I mean by that is if you're able to just read one line of text that's detailing what a wrestler did to another, and then you can imagine that in your head and turn it into you know, a full segment from a, a pro wrestling show, then you're going to be able to get into this game and enjoy what it provides you, which is a basic blueprint of setting up and running your own wrestling federation. Now, if you're looking for a more detailed or strategic wrestling game, then this probably isn't going to be for you, and it's something you're probably going to want to pass on. But I, I can tell you that this is something, it's kind of interesting, because the first couple times I played this game, it did not click for me. I didn't like it. I put it back up on my shelf, and just recently I've started getting back into watching professional wrestling on TV, and so I gave Face to the Mat another try, and this time it just worked. And if you've watched the show, you know that I love fictional sets, and so I got into the fictional card set that's available for this game, and I showed you some of the cards from the set here on the review. And it's really neat. You set up your own federation. You decide who's allies and who's foes to start with, of course, because that can all change. You pick out who the top and bottom wrestlers are. And then you sort of let the the game engine sort of guide where your, your federation is going. And it's a whole lot of fun seeing the twists and turns. And I like that you're able to set up the matches but that you're not able to just predetermine who is going to win the matches. Now, obviously, if you have somebody who's a triple A TV grade go against somebody that's an ETV grade, then most of the time that wrestler with the higher TV grade is going to win. But not all the time. There's always twists and turns. The foe of that wrestler might jump in and attack him, cause him to lose the match. The commissioner of the federation might pull a stunt where he comes in and says, oh, no, by the way, this is now going to be a two-on-one match. Just any of the crazy machinations that you've seen on professional wrestling on TV, they can happen in face to the mat. So if that's something that excites you, definitely head on over to Play.com, pick up your copy of Face to the Mat, and you're really going to enjoy it. Alright guys, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. My name's Steve, and I'll see you next time. After further review.